Welcome back to New York City. This is going to be an exciting session. We're going to cover uh, three or four days in just a short period of time. So let's get started. So I left you off with uh, 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 General Howe was down here on over 400 ships, had about 32,000 troops. Uh, George Washington was up here in Manhattan. Um, and he had about 10,000 troops, 11,000 troops. So anyway, so on uh, Ju uh, July the 20th, Hal sends over a uh, messenger and tries to talk to Washington. Washington, uh, he doesn't like the way that the uh, messenger addresses him as George Washington Esquire. He wants to be addressed as General Washington. So he sends the guy back with no message. Hal tries again. Still, same thing, sends him back. Finally, uh, the, he sends his adjutant over, uh, Colonel Patterson, and uh, he says uh, that uh, Howe can pardon him if he just surrenders and they all go back to way, the way that it was. And so uh, George Washington's answer was uh, that those who have committed no fault want no pardon. So basically, I didn't do anything wrong, so I don't need a pardon. So Hal says, okay, fine. On August, now you got to remember, he's over here in Staten Island and on, on board these ships. My, my uh, chart and mapping is not to scale or anything, but it'll give you an idea. So he's over here on, on uh, August the 22nd. He moves his uh, troops over to this uh, place called uh, Gravesend. Um, it's in the bottom of, of Long Island. Uh, and he gets over. He's going to, he's now going to attack. Washington had always thought, even against the, the recommendations of his, his uh, troops, his generals, that they would attack Manhattan first. So now he scrambles and he has fortifications over here, but not as many as they should have. So he scrambles and sends about 3,000 more soldiers over to Long Island. And so um, there, Howe is over here. He has uh, General Clinton, General Cornwallis, and um, a Colonel Grant. And so um, Clinton will stay in New York for the entire war. Uh, Cornwallis, we will follow to the, the uh, War of the South, and Howe will go back to England eventually. So anyway, they're trying to figure out how it is they want to attack the American army. And you had, you had basically... General uh, Putnam is over here, General Stilwell, um, and um, or this is Sullivan, this is, this is Sterling, this is George Washington back here. So Clinton gets word from some loyalists that all these passes, you can see this high ground, this is, these little marks around here are annotating high ground. Uh, and so they have these passes or lower sections with roads going through them. So Clinton gets the word um, and, and discusses for, uh, with Hal that there's one way that the Americans have, haven't covered. And so they discuss it, and Hal says, let's do it. So on the night of August the 26th, Hal, with about 10,000 of his troops, quietly sneak out of the bottom of Long Island, this area down here, and they march on this road guided by some loyalists, and then they kind of go off this way, and this Jamaica Pass, why no colonial troops ever guarded Jamaica Pass is, no one knows. We haven't figured it out yet. They basically had six officers riding around on horses. They were, how comes up this way, captures these six guys, and now look where he is. Look what he can do. So Hal's gone like this. He's gone like this. Oh, my paper, my marker doesn't work. Sneaks through here, and he's now behind the American troops. General, so this is the main force. Washington and all of his generals still think that the main force is going to come this way. They're down here. And they're just going to come right up this way. Well, Hal has uh, General Grant doing an attack here. 
He has the Hessians, the Germans that were uh, the mercenaries. They do an attack here. So it looks like this is it. This is the way they're going. But he has the main body, sneaks up this way, sneaks behind the Americans. Okay? And Putnam is over here, and his whole left flank is now faltering. It's falling back this way. He's having a hard time with the Hessians to begin with, but he can manage that. But now his left flank is facing the almost the whole British army. So Sterling's not doing so well. They're attacking this way. And, I mean, we're not talking professional soldiers here. We're talking farmers and merchants and stuff. They start scrambling. Now, George Washington is back here on uh, Brooklyn Heights. And so they all start going this way. Sterling with the Maryland 400, which is a, 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 the first regiment out of Maryland, they offer to protect the, the, uh, the rear while these guys are going. So these guys, they're all moving this way, and they get right about here, and uh, Sterling's Maryland 400, uh, they get into some serious battles. They actually get into two battles where they take the, the charge to the British, uh, which is astounding. And eventually what happens is everybody gets back behind this, this fortified area on uh, uh, Brooklyn Heights. Sterling is out here. Everybody is killed or captured. Um, about eight guys out of 400 get back. Uh, and Sterling refuses to surrender to the British. He breaks through their lines. Somehow, I don't know. And he surrenders to the Hessians. He just can't bring himself. So now George Washington is back here. He's surrounded, basically. He's got Howe coming down this way. He's got Grant coming up this way. So what happens? Don't forget what I said about Howe. He was a strange kind of guy. Howe stops. He just stops his army. It's the, it's the middle of the day, and he says, no more. We're just going to stay here. Now, some people think it was because he didn't want to go up this hill because he had just gone up a hill in Bunker Hill and didn't want to get annihilated. Some people said that he wanted to run off and he was a bachelor and um, had an eye for the women, so to speak. So he may have called it off there. And then some people said he was just tired and wanted a glass of wine. So Hal calls for a siege and so the British now put a siege on the Americans, reversing the, the Boston thing. So now Washington is stuck here, has his troops out here, the British are out here, and he has no way of getting back because the British fleet, these little, these little things here, that's the British fleet, okay? The British fleet is there. So Washington puts the word out that he needs all the ships and barges and scows that you can get. And they all come down, and on the night of the 29th of August, he loads them up, and he starts moving his men ever so quietly back across the, uh, the East River to Manhattan. Ever so quietly, they're rowing, and all the troops are getting back. Sun, uh, sunrise comes, and he still has men and supplies back here in Brooklyn Heights. What happens? The luck of the Irish. A nor'easter starts blowing this way, okay? And it blows a fog bank right in over the British ships, and they can't see the Americans escaping. And that fog bank lasts until noon. Washington is able to move all of his troops, all of his supplies, not losing a man back to Manhattan because of that fog bank. Had that bank not come in, the British would have woke up. They would have either seen that there was a small force or they would have just attacked and it would have been the end of the war. But no, we lucked out. We got a fog bank. Washington crosses back into Manhattan. The British are now in charge of Long Island. A devastating defeat, and that's where we stand. Tomorrow, we'll get into the rest of the Battle of, of, of uh, New York. So there you go.
Hope you enjoyed it.